All right, so before we hop into our assignment, let's take a quick review of what we have seen and done so far. Um, we have worked with some basic draw and modify tools, and we've learned about object snaps so that we can be accurate. Uh, we have worked with line and circle and rectangle, and we know what ortho on the status bar does and what polar does. We also know about object snaps, and we've used several of them, right? We use the endpoint object snap, and we used midpoint and intersection object snaps. You're familiar with those. We did center and quadrant object snaps. And for modify commands, we worked with trim and we worked with offset. All right, so we've knocked out a lot of the different tools that we'll be working with in this unit. Okay, there are still several to go though. So on page 11.2, we see some of the icons, some of the images for the tools on those different panels. And we see how uh, some of the tools have tools underneath them. Okay, on page 11.3, there's a little discussion about object snaps and how to use them, how to invoke them, uh, why they're useful, how to turn on running object snaps, how to get your temporary object snap menu with the right click, and how to set the object snaps by typing them in as you go. There's some information about modify commands that really doesn't apply to us at this point on move and copy. Um, checking your work we'll discuss later on, but here is the assignment on page 11.8. It's called Geometric Construction. So what's the idea? Well, the idea is we'd like you to focus your thinking ability on looking for geometric relationships related to the snaps that we've already talked about. All right, so what you're going to do to get this file started is you're going to open up a file. Okay, and here is the file. It's already been provided to you. It's got a border and it's got six circles on it. And you're going to do some geometric creation in this file and then save it and then submit it. So maybe the first thing we should do is we should add our name. Uh, to do that though, let's not click on the text tool and try to add text. You see there's already text here, right? So double click on the text that's there. And when you do, see the text opens up and you can click on the end of the text or use your arrow key to get to the end. And then you can type your name. Now, when you do this, see now your name is part of the text that says drawn by and your name is the same height as that text and your name is lined up exactly with that text uh, and that only happens if you use the text that's there and you piggyback onto it if you try making your own text look it's not going to work out very well okay see how it's bigger see how it's not lined up see how it's not the same color so look, this is Mickey Mouse, okay? This is unprofessional, this is not acceptable. So when you see text there, and they expect you to fill something in, use the text there. Now, if your name fits totally in the box, that's great, okay, in the title block here. Uh, if your name is too big to fit in the box though, okay, you gotta make some decisions. Uh, are you going to go with your first initial? And your last name or are you going to go with your first name and your last initial okay because we don't want text going outside into the next compartment down in the title strip so you make a decision uh, I'm sure there's only one Darren W in this class okay no one's gonna get confused same thing for the date you know the date we can fill that in double click on it Use the arrow key to get to the end of the text string and then type in the date. So today is 4-22-20. When you're done, hit enter. And now my date is edited. And I'll hit escape to get out of the text key. And now I am ready to draw. Okay. So what are we drawing? Let's have a look. Okay, in your course pack on page 11-8, we are trying to use those six circles that have been given to you to create these geometric shapes. All right, 
And believe it or not, this is not as complicated as it looks or as complicated as you might think. Um, think about the basic geometric shapes that you've been working with and the basic geometric snaps, right? These are lines and circles. Um, there's some arcs, but you know, I didn't use the arc tool to make these. I used the circle tool and then I trimmed off the part of the circle that I didn't need anymore. Okay, so there was a circle that went out here and I trimmed off three quarters of it. In fact, there were lots of circles. There was one out here, and there was one uh, out here, and there was one out here. Okay, so use the circle tool because that's gonna give you the accuracy that we need to make the geometry we're trying to construct. Just look at the big circle here. Uh, how are you gonna draw the rhombus? Where does it start? Uh, is it a safe bet to say it starts right here at the North Pole? Is there a geometric snap that will get you right there at the North Pole? You know there is, right? How about the South Pole and the East Pole and the West Pole? Is there a way to connect a line from each of those points to the next? There is, right? And then how can I draw this line here from the midpoint on this edge? Is there a way to connect to the midpoint of that line and to connect to the midpoint of the opposite line? Well, you know there is, right? So that gives us a rhombus. Uh, that gives us the X that goes through it. Okay, what's left? Well, it looks like there's some arcs here. So again, put the uh, think about where you're going to put your center mark for your circle and then draw the whole circle and then just trim off the part you don't need right and then finally when you're all done you're gonna have arcs one arc two arcs three arcs four arcs uh, how do you draw this circle here well you'll need to start at the intersection right and then you're going to snap to this point here, which would be the midpoint of that arc. All right, so this is not that crazy or difficult to do. Look for geometric relationships related to the object snaps we talked about. Let's take a look at this one. Boy, this is a jaw cracker, this guy. So uh, looks complicated, it's really not. I'll give you a couple of hints even to make this go easier. Could you start off by drawing a simple shape? Could you start off by drawing a hexagon with the polygon tool? See, because if you drew a hexagon, drawing the triangles would be much easier, right? Yeah, you'd have some corners to attach to. And then when you're all done, well, you just delete the hexagon. All right, and now these arcs, where do these arcs come from? Well, this arc here, think about where the center point of that arc might be. How about right there? Doesn't that make sense that that's the center? And here's the arc. And the circle's gonna be really big, right? Well, just like before, you're gonna delete or trim off the parts that you don't need. And that'll work around the whole edge. For this one here, this will be easy enough to create the rhombus. That's going from quadrants. How about making the square? This could be a little challenging, right? So here's a couple of things that you might do. Uh, what if you use the polygon command? What if you made a four-sided polygon? What if you started in the middle? And then what if you set your polar for 45 degrees and then go out to the edge here okay so that's one way to accomplish this uh, another way think about the shape that you could draw around this to find all those corner points that would be an octagon wouldn't it yeah so there's a couple of different ways to create these two interlocking squares 
be careful when you trim so that you have the uh, a matching set of lines to what I have here and then this distance is gonna be an offset right so if you look on the next page on 11-9 it'll tell you about that offset distance the distance is 0.18 and that's typical for this drawing uh, as well as this drawing where there's a little bit of offsetting going on all right on our second tier our second row we've got another rhombus so that's easily drawn you're going to draw some lines in here to divide it up into four smaller rhombi if that's a word and then check it out there's a circle here and that circle has to touch here and here and here and here so maybe the easiest way to do that is once you've divided the big rhombus into four smaller ones uh, draw an x through the corners draw an x through the corners and that will give you the center of each of the little squares and then you'll know where to put the center of your circle and then finally the last circle in the very middle that last circle well the radius starts here and then the radius would stop halfway between the center point and this edge that's the midpoint okay on our next figure here this six pointed star again think about a simple shape that'll give you your points to work your final shape uh, draw a hexagon and then the hexagon once you've got the hexagon you've got some locations to draw two triangles one and two right and then the rest is some trimming and some adding some lines and doing an offset over here maybe the trickiest one will be this guy and drawing the hexagon is not the tricky part connecting the points is not the tricky part the tricky part is how do you make this square All right so how do we do it um, my suggestion is and there's lots of ways to do it make a polygon that starts right there in the center point of the big circle and then when it wants to know how big well you're gonna go out at an angle at 45 until you hit this line here okay that's one way to do it uh, an alternative method would be to just draw a line draw a line from here at 45 degrees go till you hit with this line and then go straight to the right straight down straight to the left straight up and you've created your square and then last step will be create the circle to inscribe inside the square all right so here is our assignment geometric construction I know you're going to do fantastic uh, please take the time though to observe the instructions uh, make sure you follow all the information that's given there at printing time we're going to be printing a pdf file if you're going to submit it electronically unless your instructor wants a cad file in which case you will just save it using the name that we've assigned for it and then you'll be uploading that cad file okay and if you are having a face-to-face -face class well then you will print it out and then you will submit the paper.